What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, it's finally time to celebrate. Grab yourself a beer and enjoy. Why are we celebrating? We are celebrating because the flat six short block is finally complete. That's right, I was able to get all of the bank two pistons installed and installed correctly. No more issues, what a relief. So glad to finally be done with the rotating assembly. I took some video showing you guys exactly what I did, which I'm gonna put in here in just a second. But I want to briefly explain to you why I was having the troubles that I was. The vast majority of it was my fault. However, there was a problem with either the tool or the pistons as well. The reason that I consider it my fault, when I watched Jake Raby and the Knowledge Group's video on how to build this engine, it pretty clearly stated that when you insert this tool into the piston, before you slide the circlip in, that you should run your scope down the interior of this to make sure that it's fully engaged in the piston. It had been a while since I watched that video, and for whatever reason I forgot to put that in my notes that I took, so I didn't do that. Had I done that, I would have known which is what I found out later, that the tool for whatever reason was not engaging. I couldn't get it to slide all the way into the piston. And when that happens, there's no way that circlip's gonna make it all the way into the piston. It just, it's not gonna happen. There's a gap. So what I had to do was to just ever so slightly file down the edge of this tool. Gave it just a little bit of a bevel. In doing so, I no longer had any issues whatsoever. The minute I had everything lined up and slid this in, it fully engaged into the piston, it was easy to hold in place, slam the circlip in, it was uh, considerably less stressful. I'm not going to say it's uh, easy, but to an extent it's, it's pretty easy, as long as you know what you're doing and you follow the correct steps. So if you're going to build one of these engines, don't do what I did. Uh, don't watch the video and then wait a month to go actually do the process. Uh, make sure you're either watching it as you go or watch it again for a little refresher and then you won't have to take the case house apart three times like this guy. I'm gonna throw those clips in now for you to see exactly what I did to see how that process works. And then we'll move on to tonight's project. I'm showing you guys this process on piston number four, the last one to be installed in bank two. Obviously you start by putting the piston down into the cylinder with the rings attached and the circlip installed on the back side of the piston. You then use the Delrin tool to line everything up properly. Now you should be doing this with the engine upside down. I did it with it facing up just because I thought it'd be a little bit easier for you guys to see what was going on. Once you use the Delrin tool to line everything up, then you move on to inserting the wrist pin. The wrist pin goes through the piston, through the connecting rod, into the back side of the piston and stops on that circlip on the back side. Next up, you take the tool that you insert the circlip into, you push that into the engine through the access hole, you engage it into the piston, and then you use your scope to look down through that, make sure it's fully engaged, pull your scope out, put the circlip pusher tool, whatever you wanna call that, in, give it a nice firm press, pull everything back out, and then check one last time with your scope to make sure that that circlip is fully seated in its groove, and then that's it. You're good to go, time to move on. This episode is sponsored by Flat Six Motorsports. Flat Six Motorsports is your one-stop shop for aftermarket performance parts for your late model Porsche. Thanks a bunch to our sponsor, Flat Six. Make sure you go check out their website if you need any aftermarket parts for your Porsche. With the short block being basically complete, I need to bolt on this front console here, but that's no big deal. We now get to move on to bolting on the cylinder heads. However, I can't do that just yet because I'm not 100% sure what head gasket I want to order. Because this motor has been bored out to a 101 millimeter bore instead of the factory, I think it's 98 millimeter, we need to run a 101 millimeter head gasket. LN Engineering sells these and they sell them in two different thicknesses. They have a 32 thousandths thick and a 40 thousandths thick. When I originally spec'd all the components for this engine, we decided to run a negative 29 cc dish 
piston to bring down the compression ratio. I don't remember exactly what it was supposed to be, but I think it was supposed to be nine and a half to one. What I need to do now is to confirm all of the math, all of the actual measurements, figure out the chamber volume of the heads, et cetera, et cetera, to come up with the true compression ratio and figure out which one of those head gaskets to order. Once I get those on order, then we can slap these puppies on and then move on to installing the cams. The way I'm gonna go about measuring the chamber volume of these cylinder heads is with a JEGS Economy Cylinder Head CC Kit. This is part number 80950, it looks like. I'm reading it upside down. And what we do is we use this piece of plexiglass here and we just fill the chamber up with water using this, which has a graduated scale on it. In order to keep the water from leaking out though, first we need to put some grease around the chamber here and then drop that back on. Because I'm quarantined and working from home, I don't really have any like wheel bearing grease or anything here. So I'm gonna use engine assembly lube and hope that that does the trick. You wanna make sure that you don't get any in the actual chamber as that will affect your measurement. Grease on there, we'll go ahead and drop this plate on. Squish it in place. That's right, I said squish. Then we're gonna fill this up to exactly 60 cc's and then doing your best doctor impression, try to get the air bubbles out of there and make sure it's right at 60. And then we'll start filling this bad boy up. Well, we got part of it completely filled. This is not quite going as I had planned. Eh, you guys are used to that by now. Okay. I finally got all the air bubbles worked out and it looks like we put in, it's up to the 18 mark here, so we put in 42 cc's of water into this chamber. I am gonna check this other head as well, just to make sure that they were cut down evenly. Now remember guys, we're celebrating. So, make sure you enjoy an adult beverage, if you're of age. If you are having an adult beverage, comment below, tell me what you're drinking and how many. All right, funny story about the last head I measured. Uh, the spark plug was not fully threaded in, which I didn't realize, so uh, ignore that measurement. <laughs> I'm gonna have to redo it, but the process is obviously the same. Looks like our actual measurement is 33 cc's. Based on what I just found online, the heads when they were factory before they'd ever been machined were 41 cc's. So these have obviously been cut. In order to determine your compression ratio, there are uh, a number of different calculators online. The one I'm using, it's real simple. I have all of the data except for one more field. So the last thing we need to check is the piston to deck clearance. For piston to deck clearance, we are basically checking how far the piston sits above or below this surface right here. And this one, it looks like is just a hair below, but you wanna put a straight edge under it. And then I'm just gonna use feeler gauges to get under there and get my measurement. Okay, so 15 does not go, 10 does. Looks like our number is 13 thou. Now that I have all of the measurements that I need, I am going to go ahead and use the online calculator to measure my compression ratio. I'm doing all the sizes in millimeters. So we've got 101 mil millimeter bore, 82.8 for the stroke, 101 for the head gasket bore, the compressed head gasket thickness, I'm using the 0 .032, uh, the 32 thou, which converts to 0.8128 millimeter. The combustion chamber volume, the dome for the pistons, and then also piston deck clearance uh, converted to millimeters. And when you calculate all of that, you end up with 9.7 to one. So the question becomes, what happens if we switch to a 40 thou thick head gasket. 1.016 millimeters, that goes here. 1.016, recalculate, 
and that takes us to 9.5, just over 9.5. So it looks like the 40 thou head gasket is gonna be the way to go. There you have it guys, another Cayman engine video in the books. And I think the one that I'm most relieved to make. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging in there through all of my issues. I know it's been quite the roller coaster. Uh, a lot of what I've done is showing you guys what not to do, but that's just the way these things go. The good news is it's done, and from what I can tell, it's all done correctly. Hopefully the first time we start it up, a circlip doesn't fly out and cause a catastrophic failure that requires us to rebuild the engine again. If that happens, you guys might not see me for a while. For those of you that are jonesing for 07K content, I know I've seen your comments. I am desperately wanting to get over to Alan's house to work on the turbo car to update you guys. It's, it just hasn't been in the cards yet. Uh, we're all quarantined. I'm, I'm doing my very best to stay home. And if I am going to leave, it's to go to the shop to ship out your guys' orders, which uh, oil pans will be shipping next week along with rear coolant flanges for all of you guys that have ordered the 07k swap kits which means you get to permanently install the engines in your car I know you guys have been waiting over a year to have all these parts fully finished and coming in we're super pumped I can't wait to see all your guys builds hopefully 944 fest still happens this year and a number of you 07k swap guys can make it so basically, cut me some slack. I'm gonna do my best to get over to Allen's and to film an update, let you guys know where we're at. We're still waiting on his harness to be done. His is gonna be the first production harness from Performance Electronics. Mine was just the prototype and just to get the car running and on the dyno and track tested. All of these shelter in places have just wrecked our supply chain and how much we can get done as well. So we're doing our very best. Um, that's why I brought a bunch of stuff home to work on so that I could still get videos out to you guys. What you see behind me is a B5 Audi that is gonna be one of our 07K swap development cars. And I'm gonna be ripping the engine out of that. The factory V6 has some rod knock. If you guys are interested in seeing that, comment down below and I'll make sure to film those videos as well. Otherwise, I'll just pick you guys up once the engine's removed and we're going in and doing all of our, this thing keeps hitting me in the head, it's driving me crazy. Uh, and we're going in and doing all of our 3D scanning and measuring to develop all the parts for the swap. Thanks for watching guys. Glad to be smiling at the end of a Cayman engine video and drinking my Miller Lite man cans. Get off of me, man. God, that thing's annoying. I could practice boxing though, some bob and weave with that. Anyway, we'll see you next time.